right, so we're going to be determining how to compute one-sided limits algebraically. Before we get started, let's refresh our memory concerning the equations um, for infinity and infinitesimals. Okay, so what you want to remember concerning um, infinity is that positive infinity is the same thing as 1 over your positive infinitesimal and negative infinity is 1 over your negative infinitesimal and then concerning your infinitesimals you want to remember that your positive infinitesimal is 1 over infinity and your negative infinitesimal is uh, negative 1 over infinity. So the instructions are for us to evaluate each limit. Number 1, let's say we have to find the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. Um, of 2x plus 3. Alright, so we're going to substitute 2 from the right into this expression right here. So that's going to be um, 2 times 2 from the right plus 3. When you multiply 2 from the right, Let's go over what 2 from the right um, basically is. 2 from the right, if you look at your number line, this is 2, and this is 3, and this is 1. This is your um, right, and this is your left. Okay? So, if you're approaching 2 from the right, basically this is 2.5. And then if you get closer, this is what? 2.1, right? And then as you get closer, the decimal point keeps getting bigger and bigger. So this could be 2.01, all right? So 2 from the right is the same thing as 2.00, infinite number of zeros, zero, 01. All right, so if we substitute that here, we're doubling 2 from the right, or we're doubling 2.00, an infinite number of zeros, 0, 01 plus 3. If you look here, what you notice is that when you double 2 from the right, the sign or direction does not change. You're just scaling the number. So 2 from the right is going to be 4.00, infinite number of zeros, 0, 01. So 2 times 2 from the right is 4 from the right. Now when you add 4 from the right to 3, you're going to end up with 7.00, infinite number of zeros, zero, 01. That is 7 from the right. Now. For limits, the question is, what number are you approaching? When you're approaching 7 from the right, the number that you're approaching is 7. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is your final answer for question number 1. For problem 2, let's say we are to evaluate the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of 1 over 3 minus x. Okay, now for this one we are going to carry out the first step in computing limits algebraically and the first step is to substitute. Okay, so we're going to be um, substituting uh, 3 from the left into the x spot of um, this rational expression right here. 
So when we substitute 3 from the left, what we're going to have is 1 over 3 minus 3 from the left. So what is 3 from the left? To help us to understand exactly what it is, we're going to write it in its decimal format um, and then go from there. So 3 from the left, this is 3 right here. And then this is 4, and this is 2. This is your left, and this is your right. Okay? Now, this right here is what? Is 3.5. Now, if you're getting really, really close to 3 from the right, so let's say right here is something like 3. Point, let's just call it 3.1. And then when you get closer, this is 3.01 and it gets 3.0001 basically so this is 3 from the right okay well the problem is asking about 3 from the left so 3 from the left right here this is 2.5 and then when you start getting close to 3 for example this right here could be considered as 2.9 when you get closer, your 9 starts to increase in number. So this one is 2.99. And as you get infinitely close to 3 from the left, you have infinite number of 9s. So this becomes 1 over 3 minus 3 from the left is 2.99. An infinite number of nines, nine, nine. If you subtract that out, you have one over. Um, if you subtract this, you get zero point zero zero, infinite number of zeros, zero one. And that is one over zero from the right. Okay? And then 1 over 0 from the right is equal to infinity. So this is basically equal to positive infinity. And that's um, your final answer. The limit as x approaches 3 from the left of 1 over 3 minus x is equal to positive infinity. Let's consider this example. Let's evaluate the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of cosecant x. Alright, so for this one we're going to be using the first step in computing limits algebraically which is to substitute. So we're going to substitute 0 from the right into the cosecant function and then go from there. When we substitute 0 from the right into cosecant, we have to evaluate cosecant of 0 from the right. Now cosecant is a strange function. We can convert it to one of the two parent functions. Um, you want to remember that. Um, recall that uh, cosecant theta using your reciprocal identities is 1 over sine theta and you also have to remember that your sine is an s function like that okay in the positive side and in the negative side it looks something like that okay let's use that here cosecant 0 from the right is the same thing as 1 over sine of 0 from the right so sine of 0 from the right means as you are approaching 0 on the graph from the right side, what is the y coordinate that you're approaching? Okay, so to answer this question, we're going to need the help of our unit circle. We can use the unit circle or the graph. I like to use um, the graph here. So if you use the graph of sine, this is the sine function right here. We are approaching 0 from the right, so I just need the right side of the sine function. Now 
has a negative side right here okay so when you're approaching zero from the right this is zero right here when you're approaching zero from the right what happens is that the function is descending it's descending towards zero on the y coordinates so when you're approaching zero from the right on this graph you're descending towards zero on the flip side if you're approaching zero from the left on the sine function you are up you are ascending towards zero so this one is zero from the positive direction because it's above and if you're approaching sine from the left side you're ascending towards zero from below okay so this graph basically shows that sine of zero from the right means that you're approaching zero from the right since you're descending towards zero and it also shows that sine of zero from the left is zero from the left since you're ascending from the negative world from beneath the y-axis towards zero okay so descension is zero from the right or positive and ascension is zero from the left or negative okay so think about left right as up and down in the y-axis that's what it is so using that uh, piece of information this becomes one over zero from the right and then using our knowledge of infinitesimals one over zero from the right one over a very very small positive number is infinity so that's the answer to question number three